Welcome to Discipleship University. This is our first installment. Today, we're going to be looking at the Bible. We're going to break it down into large and smaller sections, and I'm going to show you how to use some of the tools that are in your Bible. Most Bibles begin with a record section. In the record section, it shows you who the Bible was given to and who gave the Bible. Oftentimes, in the record section, there's also a place where there's a record of marriages and family names and sometimes even baptisms. Many Bibles have a helps section that talks about the translation that you're going to be reading. Also, it might tell you about the abbreviations you will find. This one actually has a timeline for the Old Testament, and you may find some other helps there before you ever even get to the actual books. Perhaps the most helpful part of your Bible before you get to Scripture is the table of contents. It shows you all of the books and the order they come and the page upon which each book starts. The Bible, 66 books by four different authors inspired by God. Two major parts, you have the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament is broken into three parts. You have law and history, wisdom and poetry, and then you have the prophets. The New Testament is also broken into three parts. You have the gospels and history, you have letters, and then revelation. The first five books of the Bible are called the Pentateuch. They cover law and history. Genesis begins on the first day of creation as the universe unfolds. Everything is created in heaven and earth. On the sixth day, man is created. Then we see that God loved man, but man disobeyed God. The wage of sin is death, and we see that Adam died and there is a passage where all of his descendants die as well. That leads us to the new beginning. We have Noah and Noah's Ark. The next section of Genesis is about Abraham and his descendants. Abraham was God's chosen man. God promised Abraham, if you follow me, I will be your God and I will bless your descendants. The children of Abraham worshiped God. They followed God. Eventually, they are exiled into Egypt as God said they would be, and then God sends Moses to deliver them as they leave Egypt and head back to the Promised Land. We have all that record through Exodus chapter 20 when you have the Ten Commandments, and then from Exodus chapter 20 all the way through the end of Deuteronomy, you have all of the law of God, and as he sets up his tabernacle and all of the laws about the sacrifices. Joshua judges and Ruth deals with the period where the children of Israel move back into the kingdom, the promised land. They take it over, they divide it up between the 12 tribes, and then God is their king during this time period. First and second Samuel talk about the first two kings of Israel, Saul and David. Saul was a natural leader and wouldn't be led by God. David was a man after God's own heart. First Chronicles covers a lot of the same material you find in 2 Samuel leading into the life of the third king of Israel, which is Solomon. Then you have 1 and 2 Kings and 2 Chronicles, which covers a lot of the same material. The kingdom splits in two. You have the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah. They go into exile. Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther deal with the return after 70 years to Israel and the reestablishment of the nation of Israel. Job is out of chronological order. That should be somewhere in the middle of Genesis. Then we're leaving history and moving into poetry and wisdom. The Songs of David, you have the wise sayings of King Solomon and Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. You have the Song of Solomon that comes after that. The last section of the Old Testament are the prophets, and you have several books with different names of different prophets there. The prophets do two things. The first thing they do is they warn the children of Israel about their sin and their need for repentance and the impending doom if they don't. Secondly, they tell about the Messiah who is going to come and do away with the punishment for sin for all nations. All right, let's take a break and look at some puppies.
The New Testament tells the story of Jesus, the Messiah that the prophets predicted would come to take away the sins of the world. It begins with the four Gospels, which tell the story of Jesus. Matthew, Mark, and Luke have a lot of the same material. And then you can look at John, which was the last Gospel written. It has supplemental material that's not in the first three. The second part is Acts, which tells the story of what the apostles did after the death and resurrection of Christ. It's the story of the early church. Next, you have the letters. You have the letters of Paul. Uh, he wrote to individual people and individual churches. Then you have the, the general letters of James, Peter, and John who wrote to the church in general, not to specific churches in specific places. Then the last book that you have in the Bible is the book of Revelation. John is called into heaven and is given this vision. He sees the end of time. He sees the end of earth. He sees God's wrath on everyone who doesn't choose Jesus as their savior. We see the destruction of the world and the judgment of everyone who disobeys and doesn't choose God. Then at the end of Revelation, we see there's a new heaven and a new earth and all of eternity. Now at the very end of a lot of Bibles, you have another section that's really important, and that's your Bible dictionary and concordance. The Bible dictionary will tell you what some of the words that you might not understand uh, that you would find in the Bible, perhaps not in other places, Concordance lets you know where individual words in the Bible are found in different verses. For instance, the word love can be found in lots of different uh, passages, and every verse that has the word of love in it will be under love in your concordance. So there you have it. It's the Bible, the story of God in a 